Legends, lads, laddies, it's time. Well, welcome back because it's vitally, vitally time. In today's episode, with the help of a little redstone trickery and magic, slight wonder, we're going to build the best cow farm in all of Minecraft. This is a farm that is going to be entirely self-sustaining. We'll have wheat, we'll have cows, and we'll even have a cook or two. It's going to be beautiful. Down below today, a question for you. So far around the base, we've done so many different builds, including some pretty cool statues. What is your single favorite build of the entire base, the entire season so far? Is it the penguin statue? Is it the bamboo build? Villager breeder? You let me know. And how about the episode, the series? By tapping like, well, you let me know. Thank you. Today's build, today's build. I was doing a little bit of a scouting in between episodes and... <laughs> Oh yeah, in between episodes. Ah, yes, in between episodes. So this episode, we're back on track, recording them in a normal order. In between episodes, like last episode, or hey, the one that I recorded most recently but released an episode ago, episode number 36. Yeah, the whole time, the beauty was running. You're wondering how it's doing? Whew, it's doing. We got iron and iron and iron. Today, we're gonna definitely put some iron from this beauty over here to good use. Anyways, for today's build, in today's build, I've been thinking about where I want to maybe situate this build. I was thinking maybe start building in this area, or maybe right next to the bamboo farm, behind the portal, over next to the lava farm. Like, that could go pretty hard, I think. So, today's cow farm, the best farm in the entire world, it's gonna go right here. Farms. <laughs> now that one of you has brought that word up, uh, you shouldn't have even got me started. Farms in Minecraft, yeah, you know me, I like me a good farm or two. When it comes to Minecraft farms, there's so much diversity and variety here. Of course, we've got kelp farms, we've got bamboo farms, we've got automatic farms, we've got semi-automatic farms. Today's build is a semi-automatic farm, which means when it comes to location for this farm, unlike, say, the iron farm, the bamboo farm, we've got a lot more freedom. In my opinion, when doing a little bit of base planning and considering how you want to lay things out, it's a great idea to consider putting your semi-automatic farms, meaning farms that you need to go over to and like do something to to actually get them to work. Yeah, those kind of farms, it's a great idea to put those near the outside, maybe the outskirts of your base. So by that logic, by that reasoning, I'll be putting today's farm smack dab dead center. But it's an important farm, and I'm gonna frequent it a lot, so that's why I'm gonna put it smack dab dead center in the middle of the world. So for today's build, we're gonna pull out a little bit of beautiful redstone. I think this is gonna be kind of like, in a way, some of the first major redstone wiring we're doing of the entire world. Tragically though, it's all black and white, and the voice it cracks is even worse too. I don't have any smooth stone, and I hardly have any redstone left either. This is a race against the clock. True. You see, one of the hardest things about doing redstone when you don't really have a bunch of redstone is doing redstone when you don't have a bunch of redstone. I'm really hoping that the seven pistons, four repeaters, and 21 dust, uh, hopefully that'll be able to pull it through with everything that I need to try and build today. So first things first here, a cow farm. Any good cow farm is of course gonna need cows, but it's gonna need something to be able to like actually power the cow farm, feed the cows with. Inside of our cow farm that we're gonna build today, to make it a true all-in-one, spoiler alert, inside of our farm today, we're gonna have a beautiful cow crusher. And how much wheat does a cow crusher need on a full harvest? Well, you see it has... No, 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 you see my friend, you hear the game show music, that's your part to answer. How much does it need? Will the world ever know? 24. The answer is 24, which means if I set up a small farming area that is going to be seven blocks long and four blocks deep, plus a little bit of room for something else in the front, that's going to be 28 wheat every single time, which means over time I'll come out with an excess, and that's going to be beautiful. Let's switch gears for a minute. Aesthetically, design-wise, on the front of this build, this is what I want to do. I want to have a pillar going up right there, I want to have a pillar going up right there, and a pillar going up right there. That's going to line up pretty much perfectly with what I've got going so far. I put seven pistons in the ground back there, and then down below the pistons, I solided it up with a couple more blocks. You see back here, behind these pistons, we're gonna need to wire up the blocks below the pistons to actually, like, basically be able to power them. Now, wire up the blocks below the pistons, that is insanely, insanely easy. I know I haven't talked about redstone power, like, I guess, like, directly and specifically how it works and everything like that, but long story short, if we power the block below a piston, the power translates up into the piston, and it'll be able to extend and retract. 
Back on the outside of our farm right here, let's go ahead and make ourselves the fanciest looking stone block in the world and then slap it say right there. On top of that block, I'm gonna put a lever. This is gonna be my activation switch for the pistons that I'm gonna set up back here. In order to actually make this lever work with the pistons, all I need to do, pretty straightforward here, is run a redstone line that'll connect all of this madness that I set up back there up to the lever. Or actually, up to the lever, or right below the lever. Check this out. If I hit that, it powers. So redstone power, on Minecraft Java, Minecraft Bedrock Edition, it has some slightly different rules, but long story short here with this one, if we have a lever on top of a block, and then we have redstone dust in the block space below it, the lever should be able to power it. That's perfect. All in all, all of that's gonna basically mean that what we need to do next up is set up some kind of a line that's gonna run all the way over the pistons, but not break the blocks that are behind the pistons. I also need to be careful to not accidentally create any unwanted circuits inside of this thing. Now, creating unwanted circuits, that's kind of like a different thing, but basically, if I had a, a circuit going into this block, and then I had power going to the block, it could basically make like an infinitely powering, self-circuiting, redstone mechanicing wiring, and oh my god, I'm not gonna have enough redstone. Oh my god, no. This is terrible. I'm left, but with one option. And so, there our slightly confused-sounding adventurer was. Unfortunately, at dawn of the next day, with no redstone left in hand, he was left with but one option. In order to find the literal four pieces of redstone dust he needed, he would head off to a cave, an adventure that he'd taken on before. The mine shaft. You see, redstone, the deeper you go, the more abundant it gets, also one of the most useful things in the entire world, and somehow I've gone ahead and run flat smack dab out of it. If we can find deep slate range, which check, perfect. All I need to do is find a couple pieces of redstone ore on the side, should be able to forge in the stuff, and get way more than I need for today's adventure. Whew, you see what I'm saying? There's so much. And Deep Slate Cold too, that's cool. Plain and simple though, I think this could only mean one thing. We need to go on a cave adventure soon. Like very, very soon. Well, that was one of the most botched redstone explanations of all time, wasn't it? Let's start over. So back here, behind these blocks, to make sure redstone dust actually goes, like, straight into the blocks right here and not, like, into itself, we're gonna have to alternate between repeaters and redstone dust. By alternating like this, the redstone dust is gonna go into the block and power the piston. Now next up, to actually power the redstone dust, we need to make sure we can actually, like, get the signal strength all the way here. You see, when we started a specific target block, like say, over here underneath the lever, well basically, redstone dust it has a maximum signal, that's gonna be 15. Unfortunately, it can't travel more than 15 blocks, which means right here, even if I kinda like set this up correctly, the signal doesn't reach all the way up. Instead, to make sure the signal can reach all the way up, redstone repeater, and just like that, you can hear all of these pistons powered straight up. This relatively basic tangle mess of wires is gonna be the whole water dropping system behind our farm. This is gonna make harvesting the wheat like a million times easier. By the way, another great thing to do when laying redstone is lay your redstone on a block that isn't a block that's like a natural block. That way, if you're ever digging around in the area in the future, maybe making a subway system or something, and well, if you put it on a different block when you're making your subway in the future, you won't accidentally dig it all up. Now, redstone and water is very well known. They do not mix at all. Before we get any water anywhere near this farm at all, we need to make sure every single redstone dust is fully blocked in and covered up. I don't want to accidentally ruin anything. And also, before we get anything else in, no, oh, the, the trusty, the wonderful iron beauty. It comes in handy, hoppers. It's not a problem anymore. I can make as many hoppers as I want all day long. I'm beautiful, it is happy. It makes me so, so happy. In my life, it could not be filled with any more moments of joy than this moment right here, and it's so good. So at the front of this farm, to actually like be able to pick up all of the items and send them over to where we need them, which is gonna eventually be over in a building over there, we're gonna put a bunch of hoppers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lock all these hoppers together, have them facing each other, so that way when I drop something in here, it's gonna transport all the way down to the end over here. Now after that, water considerations, they begin. We're gonna have crops growing inside of this farm, and we needed crops to stay hydrated to actually grow. If I hide water underneath that block right there, I think underneath this block as well right here, I should be more than good enough. It'll be able to hydrate these blocks, and then I think the water up here, it'll be able to hydrate these blocks. Place a couple more blocks in on the side, and voila! We end up with something small that looks like this. This will be perfect for our cow farm today. Now next up, it's so straightforward. Using this random wooden hoe that I found, I'm gonna need to till all of this land down here, and then I guess, while I'm at it, make sure I double up on these blocks and make that look a little bit more beautiful. So not a problem right there. 
and then also fill in water at the top of this thing. With blocks fully filled in all over the place and solid water sources all over the back of this thing, check this out. This is one of the easiest cool redstone contraptions you could ask for. If I hit this lever right there, all the water flows forward. And if anything was growing in there, say like wheat, potatoes, carrots, or anything, the water would automatically harvest it for me and dump it straight into the hoppers. It's an oldie, the classic even, an ancient redstone contraption. But oh, this is gonna make my life so much easier. This will be great to have. So from now, at this point, with this contraption fully set up and fully cleaned up in here, it's looking really, really good. All that I need to do is plant a little bit of wheat seeds and wait for the wheat to fully grow up. Once this stuff fully grows up later on in the episode, I'll flick the lever and you'll watch the magic happen. Now next up, the rest of the build. So this is only one stage of the cow farm today. For the next stage of the cow farm, we need to build a proper building for the cows to be inside of, for the cows to be... Look, I do hate to say it, but for the cows to be cooked up inside of and... Yeah, I gotta build more of the build. And so, at this point, my dear friends, I would like to introduce you to our good dear friend, Builders. My thought process, the rationale for this build right here is gonna be kind of like a, almost like a simple town building vibe, but also like a barn vibe, but also like a modern machine cow wonderful beauty vibe hey there's a lot of vibes going on with this building clear you can tell and you know getting the wonderful opportunity here to build with so much cobblestone today i am reminded yet again that i really need to build a vine farm as well really really soon if i could have more vines on the side of this world like easily infinitely maybe even semi-automatically as well you know what i it just hit me now that i have infinite iron easily I don't need to be using stone shovels anymore. I mean, I guess maybe I don't need to really be using iron shovels anymore. I could definitely make a diamond shovel, but anyways, regardless, besides the point. Inside of the build, this is what I'm thinking. From the outside, to make this build feel a little bit more fancy, I was thinking we walk up and then we'll step up right here. I'll put a proper staircase there later. Then maybe to capture that early game, cow game feel, we'll do like oak planks on the inside of this thing. The only problem with my dream of oak planks all over this beautiful inside of the build is unfortunately I am all out of oak woods. So I set up a small tree farm up on the hill. And hopefully eventually one day soon my true dream will be able to come true and I'll be able to finish the floor inside of the house. Now over here at the back of the house I was thinking maybe we have like almost like a wild cow pen. I'll put fences back there and then I'll have some just wandering around. Somewhere over here, we'll put the actual contraption itself, the beauty, and then maybe, like, right next to it or something, if the farm is right there, we can put the cook station right there. Flipping all the way around over here, we have the farm area. I was thinking maybe what we could do is start with a step down to get into the farm. Step down to get into the farm, I guess it'll... I guess it'll have to wait. So for now, we can talk about the rest of the build. I was thinking a tall build, a really, really grand feeling build. To be honest, I have no clue how tall I want to actually make this build, but I do know that I want tall windows. So maybe like, what if I did like, I don't know. I might be too tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, that was definitely too tall. Maybe we'll shorten it by one block and we'll do like big glass windows right there. Eventually, we'll have a path like wrapping from right there all the way back around this way over to the iron farm. It'll be wonderful. On this front window on the proper building itself, first one would be beautiful, but it's kind of matches that build a little bit. <clears throat> now that I think about it, not this. Through stripped logs don't match the build or different from the build anymore, but anyways, I want to use stripped spruce logs. It'll be beautiful. Carrying around the rest of the build, maybe we'll do the same thing and have like a big front window on this side of the wall, but then after that, it's going to turn into like kind of like a cliff or something. Not exactly the best spot for a window. When we end up hitting this area that's kind of more like a cliff, what I want to do is the same exact design on the top with the logs, except now we flip it over and put like solid spruce planks in the middle, strip the beams on the side, and ooh, that's looking good. Or it will be. So I think by the time we're set and done with this build today, this will end up looking really, really good, but truly and sincerely, why stop there if you don't have to? After all, from the inside of the build with a ceiling like this, I mean, it'll be a nice tall ceiling, but I kind of want the build to be a little bit more grand, but at the same time, not block my favorite mob boat winner, the crab. Yeah, so guys, if this ends up dropping on the, the day that I plan on dropping it, Minecraft Live is tomorrow, and I'm locking in the boat. I think it's decided. I I feel so bad for Bonzo, poor Bonzo, but I think it's got to go to the crab. The potentials with the crab, especially after checking it out inside of this video right here, yeah, like, 
I, I see it. I get the vision. I understand the potentials here with further reaching and breaking and building and just crabbing in general. I think it's all the crab. I will not lie to you. I never could. At first, I didn't really fully get it. I was all team armadillo for sure. Hands down. I knew that was going to be the one that I would vote for this year. But then, well, well then it hit me. And maybe it's not the armadillo. I kind of hate to say it, I really, really sincerely do, but maybe it's not the armadillo. Maybe it is and has always been all the crab. Oh, and also, by the way, for our item pickup system, I went ahead and added one more hopper to it, so it pops into the inside of the build a little bit more. I'll put some trapdoors right there, that looks pretty nice, and then check this out. Anytime I want to pick up any of the harvest from this farm that is solidly growing, all I need to do is flip that open and grab it right there. So anyways, back up here on the top of the build, before I can get any cows anywhere near this build, relatively or not speaking, we need to finish off the build and make it beautiful looking. If I want to move cows into this build, I need to ensure that they're going to like, love their quality of life here. And if they move into an unfinished build, they're going to remember how it was and not how it actually is. With more fences up there, that'll give this build the height that I want it. On the side of the build, we'll go ahead and come in and strip all these logs and then... I think it's time to talk about the roof. Oh boy. The roof of the build, step number one. It's time to head back down into the mine and get a little bit more stone. The roof of the build, step number two. We head over to the wood chest. Aha. And I might just have enough, but I might need more. All right, now look here. You hear me out on this. I want to do something a little bit different on this roof, though. I'm kind of getting a little bit tired of, like, the wood combinations. They're nice looking, but I want to switch it up. I was thinking maybe, what if maybe to give it like that whole cow barn feel, but not make it a giant barn or anything like that. What if maybe we did a little bit of mangrove? And then instead of like uh, framing it around the outside of the build, maybe we just do like stone brick sections cutting straight up on the build as well. I was thinking maybe to maybe like make the stone bricks stand out a little bit more. Not only like hanging downwards, we could do like slabs sticking out that might add a little bit more detail. But then also coming up on the top of the build, we could do like slabs sticking upwards as well. That way when I have like the mangrove planks going all the way across, it's not like completely flat. And then maybe, who knows, to, but to maybe to decorate the mangrove planks a little bit more. I mean, we'll see where life takes us and how crazy we get. But I could come in with a couple stripped logs too. And actually, kind of perfectly for our build here today, I didn't want to block the crab at all, and I'm not blocking a crab at all. But, this part of the build is gonna need something else. Like, it definitely needs to have a roof. After all, it's part of the building, so... I don't think this whole grand tall feel is gonna work. I'm gonna have to crack something out. Let's see what I can do. Alrighty, you ready? You take a seat. One of the biggest building binges I've been on lately later, and voila, we've got a build. Alright, now look, don't be too harsh on the build. It's still um, in progress. I gotta add some details to it, but we got a cool looking roof with a little bit of moss. I had to. I could not resist. And some cool spikes on the top, too. But what in the world is going on over there? What the? So while I was thinking about this build and what I maybe would like to do with it or could do with it, it hit me growing hay inside of that part of the build. Now, coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, I've got a lot of hay bales. What if I maybe put the hay bales on the roof? All right, so look, I'm not too sure how this part of the build will really execute. I sure hope it will execute flawlessly, but I guess you never know. I was thinking maybe we could do hay bales laying on this part of the roof, and with my calculations, unfortunately, we can't really see the crab from, like, right down here anymore. But I think from, like, anywhere else in the base, like standing right in front of the lava farm, stuff like that, it shouldn't be a problem. So I was imagining we could put hay bales on this roof and turn them sideways in between these jungle logs that I placed down, and that might look kind of fire. Might be the perfect way to finish off this part of the build as well. And also, one of the big things I've been trying to do with all of the buildings we've been building over here so far at the base is like personality. Each building is really, really different, but they all kind of like match together somehow. Hay bale, 
Oh, that's so different. So I figured, yeah, that, that might work out. I'm gonna have to go harvest one of my giant wheat farms or something, but hay bales on the top of the roof, and I'll continue it straight back over that way. I'm sure hoping that that'll end up looking pretty good and nice. Over here on the other side of the build, to finish it off, all that I'm really gonna need to do is come in here and, and fill it all the way in. Mossy, mossy, how could I not? I did it on the other part of the build. I need to come back in here and break in with a little bit of mossy bricks as well. Just every once in a while, it'll make the build come alive. Now back over here on the outside of my build, with my build expertise, what I would like to do is add a little bit more depth to it. I think we're gonna have these cool like glass pane windows here, but what if maybe in front of the glass pane windows are like, maybe I'll lower it down, yeah, so it's properly in front of the window. So over here on the outside of the build, what I was thinking is maybe we'll have some cool arches popping off at the side of the build too, that will make it look even more beautiful looking. And also, this side of the build is going to be the main entrance, which means it's finally time for us to fill it in all the way. We'll have a door sitting in here, and then maybe like, I don't know, a window or something above the door. That could look fire. So far on today's build, I've been having so much fun. This has been such a nice build to work on. It's a relatively simple shape. It's just basically a rectangle, but like, just slapping the details on it, making it nice, tall, and grand feeling. <laughs> I love it. It could be a candidate for favorite build of the world. Well... That is, it could be a candidate for favorite build of the world for me. Maybe not so much for the cows. So look here, over here inside of our world, simply put, there's only one Minecraft cow farm that is Minecraft's best cow farm in the entire world. It's the classic, the tried and true, the trusty beauty, the great old fashioned cow crusher. This farm is great for so many reasons. I mean, it's so compact, so cheap to build, so easy to build. You can set this thing up literally anywhere and it's like almost automatic as well. Using a little bit of entity cribbing, the same tricks that we've been using throughout this world so far, we'll use the cows to take out the cows. Look, I'll keep it real and honest with you, it's not ethical, no chance at all. But with a hopper at the bottom of this spot right here, water source right there, and logs all the way around it, if I lure cows inside of this trap like I did all the way over there, well, if I can lure at least two cows inside of this trap and to pull that off with the water in the bottom, we'll actually build it up a little bit, but two cows and I'll have one of the best food farms in the entire game. So watch this. Explosion. <laughs> cows. Hey, buddies. I got a better house for you. You come with me. All right, so right now I have an explosion of approximately 24 cows, more or less. Some of them might be a little bit low on health, so I gotta be really, really careful here. My thinking here, the thought process was get at least two of them inside of the crusher and basically start from scratch, and then get a, a bunch of them, maybe not all of them, but a bunch of the extra ones in the back of the farm. Just in case I wanna have cows out in the wild or whatever later, uh, then I can source them from right there. Now listen, listen, I know it's excited, but one at a time, one at a time. We'll need one cow inside of this trap, all right? There you go. Now watch this. You go there, you go there, and you should jump right. No, okay, yep. We leave a little bit of room, and they jump right in. Ah, oh, it's so easy. Now with a little bit of patience, I can actually pull it off again. If I can get a second cow inside of this thing, boom, there we go. We can feed you and feed you, and you should be able to jump right in. All right, fine, or not. I don't know how many more cows I'll be able to fit in there. So everybody, everybody, come with me. You will live here, free-range cows, in the back of the cow farm building forever. You're not gonna worry about your friends jumping and asking for freedom. No, 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 no don't worry about them. Don't worry. Now to fix up this machine and stop it from running annoyingly forever, like jumping cows and everything, we gotta grab a bench and hold down and basically try and place on this block. Eventually, hopefully, the cows settle down. And maybe we could hold wheat to try and distract them. We just need them to stop for one second. Stop it, one second. Stop. All right, alternatively, if my cows are not gonna behave, I think I hatch up a, a different plan. So today, for this build here, earlier on, we talked a little bit about pistons and how they could be used to hold water back. Well, you could actually also use pistons to push blocks around inside of your world. If you have a block that needs to be in a certain spot and you can't get it there, you use a piston to push that block right into that spot right there. Look at that, just like that, super easily, all of the cows stop jumping. It's a really nice trick, and this fence is very essential for this operation. Without the fence there, the cows would be able to jump all over the place forever. That's not good. All right, and so, now, at this point in the build today, we've got cows in the back of the pen, and I'll go ahead and breed them up. We'll have baby cows in there, too. We've got this part that is just about ready to harvest, but we'll give it a little bit more time. From this point on, in today's build, all that we're really gonna need here is a couple more details all over the build here in the form of beautiful, beautiful arches in the form of wonderfully amazing fences. Whew, more fences always. Maybe a couple cool looking decorations around the building, like a table, why not? 
Definitely, absolutely. Some shiny, clear-looking glass panes as well. Maybe a front door on the bill. That's never a bad idea. And heck, even a step up, too, while we're at it. Maybe way, way up high on the top of the build to kind of like start to finish the inside off a little bit more. We could do these big pillars. That could be pretty sweet looking. I definitely think leaving the ceiling nice and open like I'm doing right here. Yeah, that's going to help make the build feel super grand, which is exactly what I was going for. So I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe a couple more fences, though. Why not? Over on the side of the build, these builds are really getting packed in here. <laughs> We're finally getting like a big city vibe. I love it. Now over here, check this out. It's actually finally just about fully ready to be harvested. I knew the piglin did it. I knew you did that. You're done. You're done. Oh, I didn't expect that to be so quick. Huh. Anyways, over here on the inside of the build, check this out. If you've never seen a beautiful machine like this, we flick that lever. We give it a minute and all of the drops are moving straight over to the front of the build. Other than a couple that are going to land up there. I can put slabs there to stop that from happening though. Anyways, over here on the inside of the build, we walk over here, open this up, and then all of a sudden, just like that, we're getting weed inside of this thing and all the seeds that I could dream of too. From the outside, or I suppose the inside of the build, what I was thinking here to make this build a little bit safer and stop any mobs from ever like jumping into this thing and messing it up, trap doors right there. I guess baby zombies might still be able to get in there, but for the most part, that should be pretty good. And how about some more fences? Haha. <laughs> On the inside of this farm, once I wait for all the hoppers to catch up, all I need to do is walk around and replant all the wheat. We would give the hoppers a minute to move all the items all the way down, and just like that, all the wheat that I could need for the cow farm right across the room. Over here on the other side of the valley, whoo, that base. No, oh, it's filling in so nicely. I'm so excited about this. More importantly for our operation right now, on the other side of the valley, this should be way more than enough wheat. D don't you worry, also. I'll come back and make even more cookies very soon. For now, the base. Hey, uh, also, for today's comment of the day, I saw a couple comments saying I was missing the armadillo's tail. They have a tail. And so does mine. So thank you. Whew, and the other episode's comment of the day, Operation. Oh, it's coming along nicely, by the way. Really, really nice big giant tree right there. And I mean, the smaller tree over here, but it will definitely work kind of fills it in nicely oh it's easy it's clean it's way too easy it's way too clean as hay bales the full roof is now fully finished and sure enough it doesn't block the crab at all you can see him shining right through actually it's kind of perfect i could put a garden in front of it later that'd be really fire but that all does pose one big problem and that's the inside back wall what in the world do i want to do with the inside back wall I mean, look, you hear me out here. I'm not sure on it. You let me know if it's a bad idea, but I was actually almost thinking maybe the dirt is an aesthetic. Is the dirt nice there? I feel like this big flat wall, even though it doesn't really look at anything, it needs a window though. It's like so plain and boring. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit cooler looking. We got jungle beams on the top, the hay bales, the dirt wall, the big window right there, the hay growing aesthetic. Man, that's a nice aesthetic. Maybe. And so that brings us to the very final big things that we need to get in for today's operation. I will have to continue to work to breed up these cows so I can eventually have a sustainable food source again, but what good is a cow farm inside of our farm if I can't even cook the cows up inside of the cow farm inside of our farm? Minecraft's best cow farm in the entire world it starts with a wheat farm. It transfers over to cows. Maybe they're free range or even better, they're inside of a crusher on Minecraft Java. After that, of course, you need to get some kind of a smoking station in inside of your cow farm. Without a proper smoker that also has a chimney that's going to end up popping out outside of that wall in a second, you'd be out of luck. Now, I was thinking here, to solid up our smoking operation and make it look pretty good, we'd start with some trap doors on the side. We'll make it look a uh, single unit. Now, after that, on the bottom of this thing, to continue the whole single unit vibe, we put a couple signs right there. Then, all of a sudden, we've got a giant snow. And so, with all that wonderful building check and done, that brings us to today's bonus build. Today's bonus build is kind of got to be like a little all over the place. Now that we've unlocked the beautiful beauty of iron automation all over the place, we've got a little catch it up to do. Yes, that's right, at long last, your squinting eye is squinting every second inside of the lava bar. Well, look, look, squint no longer. The beautiful, the amazing cauldrons, they're inside of the farm. But look, truly, when it comes to iron, it doesn't stop there. So long term, eventually, very soon, we're going to have a road wrapping right in front of this build, cutting over to the iron farm. 
all around the world. I've been kind of doing this whole oak fence vibe. I, I think I want to continue the oak fences. I feel like it makes it feel like more divides and everything. It looks really, really nice. Also all around the world, up until this point, I've been doing torches all over the place, and they're really nice. But finally, now that we have an iron farm, we can do a little bit of catch-up work around the world here. A little bit earlier on, when we were building the bamboo farm, I said I wanted lanterns out front of it. And, oh boy, there's some lanterns. With the lanterns in here, I might even be able to come in here and take out a lot of these torches, too. Which might clean it up a little bit. For now, though, I think I'll leave it. I'll probably test it out in between episodes at nighttime. On the cool new build that we built today, the cow farm, I also want to, of course, have lanterns all over the place. I think lanterns are going to eventually become a pretty solid staple really quickly here of the entire world. I love lanterns. They add so much to a build. They look detailed, like the shape-wise, the texture is clean, and it's animated too, and they're just beautiful. So, lanterns. For sure are going to be adding lanterns all over the place in this world. Ooh, and the trees, the trees in the middle, they grew in, finally! We end on such a high, positive note. These are big, giant trees, too. Exactly what I was dreaming of. Huge, giant trees in the middle. Big, brand new building. Cows, bonzo, smiles. And even lanterns, too. I think this might just be the most beautiful episode of the entire series, guys. And I might be tearing up. Just a little. Anyways, here, lads. Give her a little bit of time in Minecraft's best cow farm. It'll be up and running. And more full than ever before. And sincerely, dearly, and truly, thank you all so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Very, very soon, don't worry, we're going to come back in and do a little bit more detailing around the build, but uh, there's just a specific type of leaf that I really, really would love to find first. So unfortunately for today, at the end, the outside of the build is going to stay and end up looking a little bit bare. More bare than I would like, but very soon. I promise we'll make it look good, and we'll have a whole road too. You know, I'm trying so hard to do the outro right now, but I can't stop coming back over to the build and thinking about new and more tricks and things that I can add to the build to maybe just spice it up even more. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun with building inside of this world. Somebody stop me. It's going crazy. <laughs> Anyways, lads, I'd like to send a big thank you to my patrons. Pixie, Phantom, Clay S, Nick C, Arlo, aka Bobby Bobby, MinecraftMojo.com, Steve M, and Skelly Wampus. You're all legendary. The wild cow situation? I think I'm just gonna let them live. They deserve it. They escaped. They worked hard for that. Until next time, in the pouring, pouring rain, this has been me, Waddles. Goodbye, everyone.